Test 2 Review Syntax and Pragmatics. The total number of points for this test, 460, with a majority of those points coming from four tree diagrams of sentences. There are 28 questions total. Most of the questions are 10 points apiece, except for the tree diagrams. For the first two questions, make sure you have a good definition of content and function words. The next four questions focus around lexical category, aka parts of speech. So if I give you a word like, let's say quarterly for a minute, and I say she paid her quarterly taxes, or she paid her taxes quarterly, I'll say something like this. What can be concluded about the word quarterly? So you have to think about quarterly taxes. Quarterly is in a position as an adjective, but she paid her taxes quarterly. It's now an adverb. So be open to the idea that sometimes a word can be both an adjective and an adverb. Now, I will also give you some examples. If I gave you, if I put um, before, toward, beneath, within, without, under, over, I said all these words are examples of, I'll have A preposition, B auxiliary verbs, C determiners. In this case, you would say prepositions. So make sure that you know some example words for prepositions, you know some example words for auxiliary verbs, and you know example words for determiners. The next six questions deal with active and passive voice transformations. Three of the questions, for example, I'll say this. Which answer most accurately changes the bolded sentence from active to passive voice? You'll see the sentence in bold. I will rewrite it in four different answers. And you want to pick the answer that correctly rewrites it into the passive voice. You will see that three of those questions. And then you have three more questions it'll say, which answer most accurately changes the bolded sentence from passive to active voice? So the sentence will be written in passive voice. And then you have to read four answers, A, B, C, D. Which answer correctly changes this, <coughs> excuse me, back into the active voice? You will now see there'll be four specific questions that will be very similar to what you see right here. It'll say, as you draw your tree diagram, pay attention to the following phrase structure rules. So you will see all these here. It says, below is a tree diagram applying some of these phrase structure rules. So here, I'm even showing you an example of how I want you to do it. Then right below that, you'll see the example sentence I want you to diagram. Then you have a box that you have to draw the diagram in, right? You notice how this is 60 points, right? One of the questions is actually 70. So you have 60, 60, 70, and 60. So a lot of the points for this test have to do with tree diagrams. And notice, I make it easy for you. I put the phrase structure rules right here in front of you. You even see an example diagram of how I want the diagram to look. Now, of course, your diagram needs to explain or describe what you see in the example sentences I provide. The next six questions will deal with conversational analysis and particularly looking at statement sentences and determining whether they are direct or indirect speech acts. And look how easy this is. I'll even put this on the test. It'll say, for the following sentence, identify sentence type, speech act, direct or indirect. So you'll see the example sentence, right? And then you have all these choices, A, B, C, D, E, F here. So you look at the sentence, which one do you think it describes? So it's better instead of looking at the answers, I would look at the sentence. If you have some notes, write it down on some paper and then see if you can categorize it on the paper and once you've done that then check the answers and see which one resembles your answer right so you will see that six times on the test 
the last three questions of the test that will deal with Grice's maxims of quantity, quality, and relation. If I gave you some example conversations on the test, I know it would be very, very messy and sticky, and there's a lot of different ways to look at it, so I decided not to do any, any questions about that. But I just want you to know the definition. So what's, what's a good definition of Grice's maximum of relation? How does he define the maximum of quality? How does he define the maximum of quantity? Just make sure that you know those definitions and you should be good when it gets to the conversational analysis and particularly defining Grice's maxims. And that's it. That's what the whole test is about. So be prepared. This is the kind of thing that you probably don't want to just show up without any practice at all. Uh, you'll notice in the different modules, I've put all the exercises and practice that you need to prepare you for this test. I have tree diagramming practice. I have practice with direct and indirect speech acts, conversational analysis, uh, lexical categories, parts of speech, all of it. I have everything that you need. Right? If you use the workbook, you use the videos online at Canvas, you should be in very, very good shape. But remember, this is something that you need to visit and revisit a few times, and then you'll be really, really prepared when you take this test.